Hello YouTube. This is a one day video, I guess. But let's start from the beginning. A comet is an object made mostly of ice and dust, often with a gas halo and tail that usually orbits the sun. When comets orbit too close to the earth, our gravity tends to pull fragments of it into the atmosphere. These fragments or meteors burn brightly and leave streaks in the sky. A meteor shower outburst from a shattered comet may spawn new Tau Herculeids display at the end of May of the year 2022. Now the Russian scientists see it as a more dangerous event than their Western colleagues. You will know all of this tomorrow, but this is still today, so we do not know. So the Tau Herculeid meteor shower may make an appearance on the night of May 30 to 31st. Let's start from the beginning. Um, so on the night of May the 2nd, 1930, two German astronomers, Friedrich Karl Arnold Schwassmann and Arno Arthur Wachmann were exposing plates at the Hamburg Observatory in Germany to catalog new asteroids when they accidentally stumbled across the image of a new comet. It was named 73P slash Schwassmann Wachmann 3, but we will refer to it as simply SW3. The orbital data for comet SW3 show it passing only 5.7 million miles or 9.2 kilometers from Earth on May the 31st. Despite its very close flyby, however, Comet SW3 never got bright enough to be visible with the naked eye. It would, could only be glimpsed with good binoculars or a telescope. And even though Comet SW3 orbits the Sun about every 5.4 years, after 1930 it was missing in action for quite a while. In fact, between 1935 and 1974, SW3 came and went eight times without even being sighted. It was not seen again until March 1979. Its next return in January 1985 was missed, but it was recovered again early in 1990. Astronomers expected Comet SW3 to make another uneventful return in the fall of 1995. But during early October, the Central Bureau for Astronomical Telegrams suddenly began receiving numerous reports from observers worldwide of independent discoveries of a naked eye comet low in the western evening twilight and sporting a dust tail one degree long. But it was not a new comet at all. It was the old SW3. See, this is the story of a tiny comet, normally far too faint to be seen without the help of a telescope. But in 1995, it, it suddenly and quite unexpectedly brightened up to become dimly visible with the naked eye. Well, this was astonishing because the comet never came closer to Earth in 1995 than 122 million miles or 196 million kilometers. By all rights, it should have been visible only with moderately large telescopes. And yet there it was shining, 6.5 mag magnitudes brighter than anticipated, a nearly 400 fold increase in brightness. As for what caused this tremendous outburst, observations in December of, um, of the SW3 made at the European Southern Observatory in Chile revealed that its tiny nucleus had fractured into four parts. Can you tell me what can fracture a comet into four parts? Anyway, the comet was still quite bright on its next visit in the fall of 2000, showing uh, that the two of the fragments spotted in 1995 had returned, together with a new one, which probably broke off during the 1995 return. 
In the spring of 2006, the disintegrating comet made its return appearance, initially showing at least eight remnants, and some of the fragments were themselves forming their own sub-fragments. On April 18, 2006, the Humble Space Telescope recorded dozens of fragments. Between May 4th and 6th, it was the Spitzer Space Telescope's turn to image the comet. Using its infrared array camera, it was able to observe 45 of 58 comet chunks. In all, SW3 ultimately broke into more than 68 fragments, and at its most recent appearance in March of 2017, it showed signs that it's continuing to break apart and shedding new pieces with each return to the inner solar system. Well, come to the end of May 2022, things could turn really exciting. Thanks again to this same tiny strange comet. On that night, a new meteor shower, the Tau Herculis, might erupt, perhaps ranking with the best of the annual meteor displays. Yet there is also a small chance of something extraordinary, perhaps one of the most dramatic meteor displays since the spectacular Leonid meteor showers of more than 20 years ago. But why are the Russians gloomy? Let's see. Central Russia is suffering from the cold weather. Where is the tender month of May, as the month is called in a popular song there? Perhaps everything is much worse. A faded spring risks turning into a harsh summer. It's useless to ask meteorologists. They don't know, because the threat comes from outer space. On the morning of May 31, the Earth will collide with space debris. It was ejected by a comet in 1995. Everyone is just talking about an incredibly beautiful sight. Several dozen meteors will flash in the sky every second. The heavens will burn. But you have to pay for every show. It seems that not just a pile of garbage is coming at us, but a whole caravan of the smallest dust. According to the latest calculations, an eerie glow will be observed in the constellation of Leo on May 30-31. This is dust that has not yet fallen to the ground or to Earth and is waiting for its turn. This phenomenon is observed for the first time and indicates that the matter is serious. Large specks of dust from a grain of sand and larger will burn up like shooting stars. But the speed of this dust flow is small, because in such a geometry our orbits intersect, the mutual velocities almost cancel each other out. It's very dangerous. This means that most of the dust will just slowly settle to the ground of our planet. First, we will understand this when we see this incredible brightness of the night clouds, the silver clouds. These clouds in summer can be seen even in the dead of night over the northern part of the sky. They glow and make the white nights even whiter. And they are, they are identified by their appearance. They are like the veins of a cotton wool. This is the dust that hovered at the altitude of 80 kilometers before descending to the ground. It is always there, but after strong meteor showers and after spacecraft launches, such clouds simply burn. It's hard to say how they will burn after May 31. This will be the signal. What happens next is not known for certain, but theoretically dust can clog the Earth's atmosphere so much that it blocks the flow of heat from the sun. There will be a year without summer, as in 1816. In the USA, it was nicknamed 1816 Frozen Alive. It was the coldest year on record. The reason, most likely, was hidden in the volcano, which clogged the atmosphere with dust. But meteors can also clog up with dust. It is enough to recall the red sand that fell from space on Yakutia in the 1930s, and it was very cold. Or the weather anomalies after the fall of the Tunguska meteorite. It will be possible to say exactly 
how the meteor storm will affect the weather after May 31st. Astronomers, with the help of locators, will count every grain of sand and understand the scale of the disaster. Let's hope for the best. That's what the Russians say, and at this point, the only thing I disagree with is calling the Tunguska event a meteorite. But that's for other videos. Let's see what the Western scientists say. One NASA scientist stated this. This is going to be an all or nothing event. If the debris from SW3 was traveling more than 220 miles per hour, or 354 kilometers, when it separated from the comet, we might see a nice meteor shower. If the debris had slower ejection speeds, then nothing will make it to Earth, and there will be no meteors from this comet. At this integrating comet with an orbit that comes very close to our Earth opens up a discussion about the possibility of a new meteor shower being spawned. The chance of interacting with the junk or garbage of a fragmented comet may sound familiar and indeed most astronomy texts often refer to the famous case regarding the splitting of Comet Biela in 1842 or early 1843 and its association with spectacular Andromedid meteor storms occurring in 1872 and again in 1885. The question is, might we hope in 2022 for a similar performance resulting from the 1995 breakup of SW3? Well, there are three important factors uh, to be considered. When the comet fragmented in 1995, a tremendous expulsion of dust particles was ejected into space. When SW3's nucleus broke apart, particles were likely ejected into space in all directions. Small particles the size of pebbles and sand grains are normally pushed behind the comet by the pressure of sunlight, but larger gravel and nugget-sized bits are not, not affected by solar radiation, so they end up and pass closer to the Sun. The closer a celestial body is to the Sun, the faster it will move in its orbit. Gravity insists upon that. That's the fundamental natural law. So in time, these larger bits and pieces pass by the comet as they move in smaller orbits and thus move out ahead of the comet. For those larger pieces to attain this faster orbit, they need to be ejected into space at nearly 60 miles per hour, 26.71 meters per second. Typically, this speed is a bit on the high side, but the sudden breakup of the comet's nucleus in 1995 and its resulted resultant outburst of material might have been just potent enough to produce this necessary speed. As a consequence, those larger particles expelled in 1995 may have migrated to a position forward of the comet, not behind, and particles positioned ahead of the comet is the necessary ingredient for a meteor outburst. Earth will have a direct interaction with material released from the splitting of SW3 at the end of May of 1995. And the possibility of a newer, never-before-seen meteor display appears especially promising. Tau is expected to enter the Earth's atmosphere at the excruciating speed of about 16 kilometers per hour. The shower is projected to be quite bright because it will be high in the night sky during its peak period and because there will be no moon in the sky it will be much easier to notice in the northern hemisphere. Calculations show Earth will cross SW3's orbit at about 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time or 6 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, May 31st. Eastern Daylight Time is four hours behind Coordinated Universal Time. This time zone is a daylight saving time zone and it's used in North America, the Caribbean. As for the other parts of the world, I know that, for example, the meteor shower is projected to be over India Tuesday, May 31st. 
at around 10.30 a.m. Indian time. I am sure you will be able to find the time for your country. And so we will know. If you like my research and the subjects I bring you, please support me through the links you will find in the description to this video. Thank you for your attention to my research and please subscribe to my channel, please like it and tell others.